When did the rumbling start to happen where there could be some legislative changes? Take us back to the beginning. So a, a few minutes. years ago, mm -hmm. there uh, was this proliferation of what's called remote online notary legislation that was uh, basically out the type sponsored model that went across and is now in 45 states. And that allows to do remote electronic notarization. And okay, that works in states with the West Coast type closings, not East Coast at the table. And so you can have no regulation really much on who does the closing, not as much as in Georgia, let's say it that way, um, on who does the closing. So you can have companies that are out there closing transactions. You basically have notaries that are signing. And so the remote online notarization really meant remote closings. Mm -hmm. And so that was sweeping across the country. And then when the pandemic hit, it was like every state needs to have it. And so that cranked it up. But what happens is in Georgia, if you bring in remote online notarization, people think that's closing. So it would be easy for out of state actors, national companies to start trying to do closings in Georgia electronically because there really wasn't any kind of enforcement attached to it. Oh, you're supposed to follow the laws of the state of Georgia and authorized practice of law. But there really wasn't any enforcement mechanism other than the state bar, which it would have been a flood and they probably couldn't have gotten to much of anything. Ultimately, you want to have, there's 45 states, you want to have a state that does have remote notarization, but you also want to make sure that you have an electronic closing capability that would be in the hands of the attorney because that's our state law. And, in, and so how do you prevent anyone from cheating or whatever you call it, right? Mm -hmm. From using that technology because it's simple technology. Right. And the way you do that is you establish enforcement mechanisms. Okay. You, you know, we already have these Supreme Court opinions. We already have these rules. So establish that as a statute and you get enforcement. And then you have electronic closing and you have electronic notarization and it all would work for an attorney state. That, that made a lot of sense. And it was running into a little trouble because people are still a little um, anxious about the remote right. closing aspect. Right. So you can do an in-person electronic notarization, which is an in-person electronic closing, Right. which is very similar to what we do now. So the legislation is designed to keep attorneys supervising the entire process, hopefully so that right. uh, sellers get better service and really more importantly that the buyer gets good title to the property, but allows you the flexibility to do the remote signing and notarization and stuff like they can do in other states. That's how it was proposed this session and okay. sort of a proactive measure. And it really is the series of events, the control of the process, the, you know, exactly what you were just saying as yep. far as supervisory, but it's, it's really control. And there's a whole bunch of definitions that have come out from the Supreme Court that discuss that. Right. And that's really what the design was to allow remote notarization for notaries without complicating that part. Right. But then you make it more complicated when the lawyer and the uh, real estate is involved. So the remote notarization would have excluded wills and it would have excluded real estate. Ah. But if you did an electronic closing with attorneys, they could have used that technology. And right now, you know, I'm not sure George is quite ready for the remote closing aspect, but like I said, um, that was the whole theory behind the bill. So what's the legislation that's on the table right now? I would assume we're getting toward the end of the legislative session, so they're going to vote on it sometime soon. And so, uh, like, what is what is what are they going to vote on? It's everything I just told you Okay. with the remote electronic notarization, but you can't do wills and you can't do real estate. And then um, we established the rules in, in, you know, in hard print as right. far as the rules that already exist, the Supreme Court rules already exist. And so we just make them in print statutes so we can have enforcement. And then the third thing was instead of having remote electronic capability, you can have in-person electronic capability. It's called IPIN. So that's currently what's on the table and in the process Got of it. potentially well, passing 